Welcome back everybody, welcome to my workshop. It is time to finally get these fuel tanks installed into the wings so that I can finally install or rivet these two wing skins and completely finish up these wings. So I've been trying to figure out for a long, long time now how I'm going to mount my fuel senders in the wing tanks. I did not want them in the side of the tank just because if they do decide to leak or stop working in the future, it's gonna be really difficult to drill out a lot of rivets on a painted wing to take out the fuel tank to fix that fuel sender. So I wanted to put mine in the top of the tank, but I wasn't sure, first I wasn't sure what fuel sender I was gonna use, if I was gonna use a stock fuel senders that came with the Zenith kit or upgrade, upgrade to the uh, senders that the Vans RVs use, where I'm gonna mount them in the top of the tank, how I'm gonna mount them. It's just been something I've been putting off for a long time. And I finally decided that, you know what, I gotta get this done because I need to finish these wings. The airplane's getting really close to paint, so I need to finish up the wings and uh, get those ready. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I installed my fuel senders, but I want you to keep in mind that there are many, many ways you can do this. There's different fuel senders you can use, there's different places you can mount the fuel senders, there's different ways you can mount them. This is just how I did it. It might give you some ideas, but I really encourage you to think about your own fuel tank system and how you want to install your senders. Okay, the fuel sender is installed and complete on the right wing tank. You can see it there. It's mounted on the top. That big hole right there on the side is where generally people mount the fuel senders. But as you can see, if it was mounted there and you had to replace it, you'd have to un undo this skin here and probably this skin to get to the tank. So now with the fuel sender on the top, I can just put a, cut a hole in the skin before I install the skin, of course, and then put an access cover on the top. So if anything ever happens, all I have to do is take off that access cover and I have access to my fuel sender. So the first thing I had to do is figure out where I want to install the fuel sender on the tank. Some people I've seen install, have installed it here with the arm going forward. So the float goes up and down up here. I've seen it up here, I've seen it down here, I've seen it all over the place. At some point, your fuel indications are going to be inaccurate. You're not gonna be able to get it accurate at full fuel and then at zero fuel. So I prefer to have mine more accurate on the low end because if it's full, I know it's full, I don't really care. On the low end, I wanna, I wanna have an accurate fuel indication. So the best way I figured to do it was I have my fuel sender going in here with the arm going down. As this fuel tank sits in the, the wing, it sits like this because of the dihedral in the wing. So the fuel is always gonna be coming down to this side. So I wanted the fuel sender on this side and my float is about here, almost the center of the tank. I think the tank, this is probably the aft, this is the aft part of the tank, which is probably lower than the front. So the fuel will actually be, if you put one gallon of fuel in here, technically it should be sitting down in this corner. My float doesn't go all the way down there. So on here, if my float is about halfway, my thought is that once the float indicates zero, I probably have a gallon or maybe two gallons, I just don't know, of fuel left. Um, the problem is if you put this fuel center down here and have the float all the way down here so that it's super accurate at the bottom, well, it's gonna indicate full fuel at like three gallons or so of fuel because you can, the, the bottom of this tank is super skinny. Your float's only gonna move like this much. So I, I placed this in a position where I can get full range of the float. Um, and that's kind of how I determined where to put mine. I think you could probably put it here in the middle of the tank and have the float out here, but at the further you get away from this edge of the tank, I think the less accurate your low fuel level is gonna be. So that's kind of the, the, the problem with determining on where to put this fuel sender is it's just, you're, you're kind of balancing everything. It's what do you want to trade to give up? Where do you want it to be accurate? Um, so I, in, in my, my case, I put it up here in the corner. My float goes out this way. The float's about halfway. Um, so I think it'll indicate full before the fuel tank is actually full. Um, and that's okay. 
if I have a full fuel indication, it'll stay fuel until I burn five gallons out or whatever, four, I don't know. Uh, but then as it starts to get into the half or mid or low range, I think it's gonna get more and more accurate. So let me show you how I mounted this fuel sender. To cut out the hole in my fuel tank, I did use a fly cutter. I put it in a cordless electric drill. And you have to be careful, but you can get a very, very nice hole in the tank with this tool. I did not use the stock Zenith fuel senders because I've just heard too many people complain about them and have problems with leaks and, uh, and having them not function correctly. So I went with the Stuart Warner fuel senders. These are the exact same ones they use in the Vans RVs. Um, I think they're about $20 a piece. I just went to stuartwarner.com and ordered them there. So that is what I'm using in my tanks. Now I wanna show you what these, these look like here. If you haven't seen these, they come with a, a ring and, and this. And you will need to get a, uh, an installation kit. I can't remember if I bought these separate or if these came with my Zenith kit, but you might have these. These are from VDO, but they do work perfectly with the uh, Stuart Warner senders. What it does is the, the installation kit comes with a, a rubber grommet and the screws that you're gonna need for this. The only thing the sender comes with is the sender, the steel ring, and the float. There's no screws or anything with it, so you, you need to get the installation kit. You can see that they have a, a cutout in this ring, and that is so that you can insert it into the, into the hole in the fuel tank. But I wanna show you this little extra, see that little extra notch I cut out right here in the middle? So the way this works is you cut a 59 millimeter hole and the reason this notch is in there, like I said, is so you can actually put it in here. So the way this inserts, once you have your float on it and you're ready to install it, is it goes in the wing, and it's gonna be hard for you to see on this video, but this notch is there so that you can kind of get an edge put in into the hole and then you can, uh, you can put it in from there. Now the way this seals is that from the, the only thing it seals on here is the very lip of this hole. Basically from the outside of these screws out, you can see that's just barely an eighth of an inch. So obviously I wanted this hole in the tank as small as possible to give this more surface area to seal against. So that little notch that I was showing you that, that I notched out in the middle right here, I actually used a Dremel and notched that out because what it allows me to do is make this hole just a tiny bit smaller and still be able to insert this ring. So the other thing you need to, to figure out, and it takes a little bit of trial, of er trial and error, is where to bend this float arm and how long to make it. And the way I did that was, I just kind of made a, out of a, a hanger, I bent a little uh, loop at the end to simulate the, the float. It's the same size as the float pretty much. And I left this long and I kind of kept cutting it until I got the, the length that I wanted. And the way this works, or the way I did it, was I just put this in here and I, I, I made it as long or as short as I needed to get the, the most range of travel that I can get with this. So it hits the bottom of the tank and the top of the tank. Once you figure out how long you need your arm, well then it's easy, of course. You just put it on here, make a mark on your, on your real float arm, and then bend it over 90 degrees, and then I'll wind up cutting it about right here. All right, that's easy. Once you cut it, use a file to clean up the edge. And then this actually just gets inserted into your fuel sender like this. It goes through the hole. And there's some clips right in this arm here uh, that it has to be pressed into. All right, there, I snapped it in. Here's my float, and I get full range of travel in my tank with this float. Now, before I install this fuel sender in the tank, I want to show you one more thing here because I'm going to do all this at the same time. If you're familiar with the Zenith tanks, or the, uh, the 750 or the cruiser tanks, I should say, there's a vent that comes down here. It's a, a tube that sticks down about an inch or an inch and a half. That tube goes up to the inside of the tank and just stops just short of the, the top of the tank to vent. The problem is some builders have experienced when you have full fuel tanks that fuel will leak out of this um, vent 
um, and you'll lose some fuel or it'll go all over the wing or whatnot. So I wanted to eliminate that. I'm sure you guys are familiar with um, the method of venting the fuel caps instead of using this vent. That's what I'm going to do. So I need to plug up this vent and what I'm going to do, I got this idea from somebody on the Zenith forum, so it's not my idea, but I, I tapped this, I cut off the tube that's in, in here, I used a tap, this is an 8 millimeter by 1.25, and I tap that, and I have a set screw that I will install in here, and the reason I'm going to do it the same time I install my fuel senders is because I'm going to seal this with Pro Seal along with using Pro Seal on my fuel senders to seal it. So speaking of Pro Seal, this is a small one-time use container of Pro Seal. It's a two-part uh, like kind of rubber adhesive or whatever you want to call it. I ordered this from Vans Aircraft. You can go to vansaircraft.com and order this directly from Vans. I think this was $20 if I remember correctly. And I bought two of them because once you mix this, you are kind of time limited before it starts to cure. And I'm doing one tank at a time. Uh, there's enough in here certainly to do both tanks, but you're gonna have to work pretty quick. So I bought two of these. I used one tube or, or one container on the, the first tank that I showed you at the beginning of the video. And then I'm gonna use this one on, uh, on this fuel sender. Since I'm not using that vent on the bottom of the fuel tank, I made this little patch, this little square, and just rivet it on the hole where that fuel vent would stick out on the bottom of the wing. So all I'm doing here is spreading this Pro Seal around the, the lip of the hole. I put this on first and then I put the fuel center in after I had the, the, the uh, Pro Seal on the hole. So here I'm just taking a toothpick and putting a little bit of this sealant around each of the screws just in case um, you know any fuel kind of seeps up through the threads this will seal the, the screws and prevent any leaks. All right let's wrap this up. Both of my tanks are done. The fuel senders are in both of them. Uh, I didn't show you, but I actually put some fuel in there and turned the tank upside down to see if it would leak. I let it sit for quite a while. So they don't leak, which is good. Um, they're perfectly sealed. The vent on the bottom of the tank is sealed. They are ready to install into the wings. I need to cut a hole in the top skin, obviously, to have access to those fuel senders. And I'm going to make a custom domed shape access cover. It has to be dome shaped because those fuel senders stick up about that much, about maybe three eighths of an inch out of the top of the wing. I have a couple ideas of how I want to make those covers that I think will work. I'm not sure, but I'll try it in the next video in part two and uh, come back and check that out. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and like and do all that YouTube stuff. See you in the next video.